Okay, Lithia is um, a princess from from the old days, I guess. I mean, we're kind of in a, a limbo of time, right? When this uh, this film is taking place, no one really knows when it is, but there's been a huge war 300 years prior, and she was a princess um, of one of the the factions that was warring against each other, and she fled, and um, the war ended with basically everybody dying out, everybody killed each other, and um, things kind of just became extinct for a while, and so vampires that are left are just not, they're not organized and they don't have, you know, a royalty system or anything like that anymore, and so Lithia doesn't realize that anybody even knows she's a princess anymore until uh, her wedding day, and she, uh, she marries... Vincent and quickly d discovers that he's a vampire as well, but not only that, he's a mortal enemy of hers from the old war. And um, it's, that's really exciting. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> but um, she gets saved by a steward who has been assigned by her father 300 years ago to keep watch over her and to protect her. And uh, this just blows my mind. I love that part. And so when the movie ends, it's kind of a beginning because now that we now we know that Lithia is a princess and there's someone who is acknowledging her her royalty and her leadership and they're both on the same side, but at the same time we have Vincent and he's from the and he's royalty from the other side and he's got his friend with him and they're very much interested in in taking things to the next level the one thing i really did think about in playing vincent is i've got to you know there's got to be depth to the character there's got to be more underneath than just somebody who yells and screams in a, a, a dark persona and i think with this i think this what kind of adds to some great writing is that we don't see who Vincent really is in the beginning. It's almost like a firework waiting to go off. We see the the initial um, of, of you know what what can really happen. Um, in the beginning, you know, we see Vincent as a very romantic character. Um, the way he looks at Lithia, the way he studies her, the way he you know looks at her with his eyes and his thoughts and how he feels about her. And we see this love, um, a very romantic love, but something's not right. And I almost want to say to people who watch this, and I think you should always watch special features at the end of the film, but one thing, I, I, if people don't see this in the film, I hope they see this when I describe it to them now, is one of my favorite looks when we shot this movie, one of my favorite looks, and I hope it comes across, you know, to people is when I was walking down the aisle with her and we see my bodyguard and I'm walking down the aisle and I look at her and there's this love and this romantic look to each other and this feel but as we near the as we near the you know the pulpit or, or whatever the, the the altar I kind of look at my bodyguard like get ready so like there's just it's, I look at it as almost like a firecracker waiting to go off as like I look at him and I'm like get ready because we Vincent is putting on a show he's putting on an act and then we truly see what comes off you know, really what comes out you know when he tries to turn her and she ends up being <laughs> another vampire and we truly see him for what he really is and I think that's gonna shock people but I just I, I hope people can kind of see the subtleties the subtext of what he's really thinking and I think that's what makes him so evil I think in quoting you know Shakespeare I love Shakespeare and one of my favorite villains in Shakespeare is Othello. Well, not, not Iago in Othello. <laughs> Iago is the ultimate villain in all of literature. I don't care what you say. He is the ultimate because you see him, how he acts in public and how he acts towards his friend Othello. And then when he steps aside from that and we get his monologues and they are just dripping with disdain. They are dripping with evil. And we truly see him for what he really is. But then after he says this monologue, he goes back to the scene 
And we see him completely faking it. And the whole time you're watching him do this. And you're like, oh, I think that's the most evil. I think out of any, you could, you could, you could, you could shoot people, you could kill people, you could rape, you could murder. But I think the, the root of all evil in any character is that outward lying and pretending to be something that you're not to get what you want. And I think Vincent's very much that. I think that's why people are going to really <laughs> have an interesting take when they watch him. So the character of Lancaster, he has a couple different sides of him that like, really I was able to relate with quite a bit like in real life, in, in a sense. I mean, I'm not 300 years old or whatever, but like, at one point, like, one side of him is he, he's a soldier. He, he's a, a, a steward for the king, or was, and now he's just the guardian, the protector of Lithia. And, and so, so one, part of him is, one part of him is he's a soldier, and he's doing his job, and he's a professional at it. He's doing it very well. You know, he's, you know, he's been trained. He has 300 years of experience in, you know, being this assassin-type figure, this protector of Lithia, this bodyguard, basically, is what he is. He's the bodyguard. So he's very good at that. But at the same time, he's also, so he's really hard kind of on the outside. He, he's, he's a bad mother. And on the inside, he he's still, you know, strong, but at the same time, like, he's in love with Lithia, and he's kind of really soft in his emotions. You think, you know, a lot of, you know, really tough people, you know, they're really tough inside, but but he really isn't tough inside. And, and in the film, at the end, like, you really you get to see that come out somewhat, where, uh, where he really gets to express his feelings that have been bottled up inside of him for 300 years, where he just has to just swallow them down and he can't express them. And, and, and throughout these 300 years, they've just been, you know, biting at him and chewing him away, chewing at him, just because uh, he really loves her and he can't do anything about it. And, uh, like, and that's something I can associate with, like in real life, you know, a lot of, a lot of men can, because there's like a girl that you might really like and you can't, you can't get yourself to talk to her, or she's got a boyfriend or something, and or you never see her again because she moves away or something, and so those types of feelings are kind of relative today to every to regular people. So.